So uh, first thing I wanted to mention is when we talk about job costing, uh, we're, we are not talking about construction industry only or contractor industry only. However, job costing very often shows up on these type of industry. Now, if I really wanted to go in depth in job costing and, and you know, teach an entire class about job costing, we would actually uh, keep in mind that all these bullet points you're seeing on the screen, this would be a good one to take a screenshot of. These are all the things that come across. You know, these are all sort of the things that you need to know and need to learn in order to, to really uh, do a consultation, a complete consultation in job costing. You know, things like payroll expenses, are you going to labor burden the payroll taxes, labor burden the workers' comp? You have to make that choice. Are you using an outside payroll service or employee leasing? Do you need certified payroll reports? Uh, billable, non-billable items? work in progress, completion percentage, all these things come across. Even the very last one, if you've never seen an AIA G702 uh, spreadsheet or a, a AIA G703 spreadsheet, Google it, look it up, because this is what contractors use in order to uh, schedule their payment and things like that, especially when they're dealing with government contracts. So I, we cannot cover all these topics in a, in a single uh, episode. Like this, it will turn QB power hour into QB power day, right? So. So we're going to pick a, a narrow set of topics here. I'm going to narrow, narrow it to four, which is, these are the four most commonly used, the most commonly asked, uh, asked for. So expenses not assigned to jobs. So we'll start with that. Let me switch over to my, to my QuickBooks file here. Job costing and uh, allocating expenses by job. Basically, in a nutshell, we're talking about pulling a report called the profit and loss by job and being able to see uh, all the jobs, and I'm just going to hit a collapse here and compress it. So being able to view every single job as its own profit and loss, right? And then there's, we can go in detail, we can go in summary. This is an example of a summary. So this is the premise here. The, the purpose of us doing job costing or any of these functions is so we can look at a gross profit or even a net profit by job. So the first report I want to I talk about is this one called expenses not assigned to jobs. So that should be here in the, let's see, expenses not assigned to job. As a matter of fact, okay, that's good that it came up. So this is something that would only be in the contractor edition of QuickBooks. Uh, and if you have the accountant edition, it would be sort of buried under the industry specific report, the contractor report. So this one here is called expenses not assigned to jobs. So I'll start with this one. Now, so what this report does, and what's a little bit confusing about this, what this report does is it has a hidden it has a hidden filter that you really can't see. So if I go to filters here, it has a hidden filter that basically only shows you expenses that don't have a job allocated to that. So what does an expense not with a job allocated to it mean? It means that I go into this check, for example, and I don't have a customer here on this side. So basically, this hidden filter that's only triggered by this specific report will only render the transactions that do not have a job associated with them, okay? So simply to, to, to assign a, uh, an expense to a job, it, it is as simple as just hitting the drop-down menu and selecting the job. So, um, so that's basically, in a nutshell, how you do some job costing. Let me, let me grab this other expense here, which is a, a credit card expense, right? So this one right here, um, let me see. There's this line here, which is a zero. Uh, and then in this report, it shows up zero. That's why it shows up on the report. So that's interesting. This one, it's a line item that shows on the report but with a zero value because it was used on a transaction, right? Even though it's a zero value, it's still a line item and, it, and it's got no customer job in it. So that's basically what makes these things happen. Now, the other important thing about job costing is that typically, I would say 95% of times, and I'll, I'll invite Michelle to give me her opinion on that as well, 95% of the time, people tend to job cost, cost the goods sold. So they job cost direct expenses. They don't typically job cost uh, things like overhead, right? That's typically not job costed because overhead by definition is something not related to jobs. So that's an important concept to kind of uh, keep in mind here. So let me do a profit and loss by job in this case, but I'm going to filter it down to just a single job so I can do the, the entire example. So that was expenses not assigned to job. The next one we're going to look at is job estimates versus actual. Now, this particular example is the one that's going to take the longest. 
As a matter of fact, if this takes my entire time, we may not cover work in progress and committed costs, which are enterprise only features, but I like to really hit it home job estimates versus actuals because it's the single most important concept in here. So let me get started by setting up an estimate. Step number one, you cannot work a report called job estimates versus actuals if you don't have an estimate. The absence of an estimate will completely render the attempt to do that report useless because it basically doesn't have an estimate to pull from. So let me create a new uh, customer. We'll do a customer test here. Okay, this is for the example. The other piece that's extremely important for this is your estimate template must, absolutely must, have the markup column open. So what do I mean by that? If you're working off an estimate like this one, uh, actually this one's not a good example, okay. all, all, all three of these have it. So let me show you what it would look like without it. So if you were to uh, change the format here, and uh, here under columns, you have this internal cost and the markup. If you had markup turned off, and I'll show you, if I have markup turned off, I don't have the ability to state my internal estimated cost on that particular item. That will completely render this exercise uh, useless. So that's a very important thing. So if you're new to this, this is an important point. Your estimate must include that markup column. Now that markup column doesn't have to print. Your customer does not have to see that, obviously. But it has to be able to be worked in on the estimate on the proposal. So that's step number one. Okay, so step number two is I need to make sure that whatever items I'm working on, they must be double-sided items, okay? So we're going to, let's call this, for example, wall installation, installation, right? I cannot just create this as a single-sided item. I must hit this weird check mark here that has very strange explanation, just, you know, sub-assembly, subcontractor partner, you know, sometimes that doesn't make any sense, but either way, you have to make sure you hit this little checkbox and that it opens up the item to be a two-sided item. The expense account is typically going to go into something in the cost of goods sold world, right? Because if it's an item in an estimate, there's going to be some sort of direct expense towards uh, uh, using up that item. So in this case, work, uh, wall installation is sort of a labor uh, type of expense. So let's assume, for example, that we hire subcontractors and we're going to put that in the subcontractor cost of goods sold expense. Now, on the income account, right, it would be construction income, anything like this. It doesn't really matter. And, sorry, as long as I hit any income account, it should be fine. Okay? So this is my cost side is going to cost of goods sold. My income side is going to an income account. The initial cost and the sales price, uh, that doesn't matter. That's probably going to vary by job anyway. So we'll hit OK. So that's lesson number two. Lesson number one, markup must be in there. Lesson number two, the item must be double-sided, okay? So let's say, for example, that I think this is going to take me about 12 hours, and rate, in this case, is my internal cost. So my subcontractor, let's say, is going to charge me $45 per hour. Now, my complete total, my out-the-door sales price needs to include my markup. So if I'm going to charge my client, let's say, uh, $120, I have to make sure that in this markup, I include $120 in this case times 12. Okay, so it's a total markup, not per item, but for the entire amount of 1440. Now this is non-taxable, so I'll take this out of the way. So what this particular thing is telling me is I'm estimating my internal cost to be $45 per hour, $540. I'm estimating to make 1440 in profit, and what I'm supposed to charge my client is 1980. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and, and save that. So we'll save and close. So how does it work? When I go to report, job time and mileage, I'm going to go to job estimate versus actual summary. Okay? And it's going to give me all my jobs, right? So if I, if I just focus on the very first one, which is customer text, let me make this uh, font a little bit bigger here. So I focus just on this first one. I see it very clearly. I'm supposed to spend $540 in this job. I have spent nothing so far. I'm supposed to invoice 1980. I have invoiced nothing so far. Okay? So I'm going to leave this report open because we're going to refer to it later on. As a matter of fact, we're just going to go ahead, go ahead and filter it. So we're only looking at that uh, customer test and we're not uh, really looking at anything else. Okay, so that's all we're focusing is on this particular job. So let's say I'm going to job cost and expense, which is as simple as uh, writing a check to whoever you're going to write a check to. And you choose the item. In this case, let's say this is my subcontractor that I use for this job. So 
I'm going to make sure I don't hit the expense account because if I hit the expense account, I'm going to get some really strange behavior on the report. I'm going to hit the item account so the report itself can tie that expense to that original item in the estimate. So we're going to come in here and let's say we actually pay these guys 13 hours, not 14 hours. For whatever reason, it, it, this is just what it ends up being, right? So I have to pay him uh, 14 hour, 13 hours, not, not 12 hours. I'm still making money, so not a big deal. And then on the most important piece, I need to job cost it, right? which means I basically I'm going to select the customer that this expense is going to be assigned to. So I hit save and close, right? And then I can see now in real time what's happening. Um, my actual costs are over my estimated cost. I can actually go to customize report and add the percentage as well to kind of tell me where I stand. So I'm actually over 8% of my estimated cost. Okay? So you know, take, take some time to digest that for a second. That means that I did not hit my goal, right? I went over budget. Now let's talk about the invoicing piece. So let's go into the original estimate here. So I'm going to go into uh, estimates and I'll go back to that estimate. Of course, it's not going to be right there easy for me, so let me look it up. Okay, there it is. Um, and let's say I'm going to convert this to an invoice. So I'm going to go to convert to invoice, and I'll convert 100%. But let's say that for whatever reason, I really couldn't charge my clients uh, the entire amount, or maybe I had to give them some sort of discount uh, because we messed something up or something. So I'm going to lower, I'm going to leave my, uh, my 12 hours in there, but I'm gonna, maybe going to lower my weight by maybe $200. So what I'll do is I'll do another separate line for the same wall installation and I'll just flat discount it for 200 So I'll just put here for repairs incurred by client or something something like that. Right. So now I'm basically reducing and I make sure I take away sales tax from this calculation. So I'll put here. Okay. So now in this particular case I'm actually invoicing a lot less that what I was, or not a lot less, but less of what I wanted to invoice in the first place. So, so I'm going to hit save and close. And then what happens with this report? Now, it, it looks, I'm still profitable, by the way, but based on what I wanted to make, I'm actually seeing my percentage difference and my percentage difference on the invoice and on the revenue side. Let me show you. This shows in here. So this is a sort of a more of an operating report than a profitability report. This is not about being profitable or not. This is about hitting your target target that you're supposed to invoice and target that you're supposed to um, uh, pay. And the, the job profitability report that you will see in tandem with this would be that job profitability detail report. So I'm going to go to job profitability detail and I'll select customer test. And, and this would actually give me this breakdown, right? So I can actually see per item how much I actually paid and how much I actually invoiced and that's my new profit. Okay, so if I go back to my original estimate here for a second, and, I, and it, does look, it looks like I won't have time to do uh, the other example, um, but um, but I think these are, these are, this will work pretty well here. So let me go to customer test. So originally I was estimated to make 1440 on this deal, and I, I ended up making 1995. So this is like actually a pretty interesting uh, report to look at. Okay, and you can also look at the percentage difference here. So you can actually see, and this is marked up not margin, that's an important. So I'm actually having 204% of my actual cost as a markup to my revenue. So that's kind of how these things behave. Now I think I do have, Michelle, another five minutes to let me know if there's questions or if I need to stop, just interrupt me, okay? All right, so as I go along here, I'm going to show you something else about job costing. Now what happens if I fail to use an item, okay, if I fail to use the actual item and I actually hit the, the account directly. Okay, let's see how that, what happens with that behavior. So if I hit the account directly, let's say for example I ended up having to pay some job materials or something that I wasn't expecting. So let's say we had to go to Home Depot, so we'll do Home Depot here. Okay, so we go to Home Depot and I, had, and I ended up having to pay $125 worth of materials. I wasn't really expecting it, but it just happened. And then I also have to job off this. Now, what I'm trying to show you is what happens if I use the account instead of the item as I instructed at the beginning. So I hit save and close here. Uh, what ends up happening is when I look at a detailed report, not, not this one, so the job estimate versus actual, it still shows me that cost correct. When I, when I go to the detailed report, now I have this new 
row that says no item, and that's basically what happens. So what ends up happening, a lot of my clients, they, they freak out about this. They're like, wait a minute, what do you mean no item? And, and everything starts getting convoluted. So what if I had used an item that, so let's say we're going to do it correctly. We are, we are going to use an item. So instead of using uh, this right here, we're going to use an item that we're supposed to. So let me clear this out. I'm going to use an item that we're supposed to. But it's an item that was not on the original um, sort of uh, estimate in the first place. So let's look for some, uh, uh, we'll put, pick something similar here. So let's say non-inventory part, and we have to end up using right here as encounters. I guess, I guess those are the materials. So I'm using a non-inventory part, $125. This is the same thing, but instead of using the account, I'm just simply using the item. I'm going to hit Save and Close here, and, and, and let me show you what happens. So what ends up happening is, when I look at my uh, detail report here, let me just refresh it. I do want to make sure that I did job cost that one. I want to make sure I didn't miss that somehow. So let's go 125. There's my check to Home Depot. There's my item. Yep, I forgot to job cost it. There you go, customer test. Hit save and close. And then we'll look at this report. So what ends up happening is, now I see another line item with, uh, with an actual cost and no actual revenue because I'm not really making any money on this item. So this kind of starts allowing you to see where is it that you're losing out or what, what you should have included on the estimate in the first place. On the other report, which is the, the other one we're working on, the estimate versus actual summary, and I'm going to uh, come in here. Actually, it wasn't summary. I apologize. It's the details. So I'm going to go to that one and I'll do the detail one for the customer. So what ends up happening is here it tells you estimated cost zero. So that means that you are different. Obviously, 100% of it is the difference. Um, so I wanted to show you that uh, there's committed cost reports and work in progress reports that are introduced in QuickBooks Enterprise, which uh, you can actually see on, on this section here. But I just don't have enough time to go over them.